Send with the noon news brought to you Monday through Friday at this time by Central Electric Membership Corporation, a Touchstone Energy Cooperative. And now the news. Warm weather will be the rule this weekend. Highs will be in the mid-80s through Monday. Our normal high this weekend is near 80. Skies will be mostly sunny today and mostly sunny to partly cloudy on Saturday. By Sunday, a few more clouds will be around with partly sunny skies. This is because low pressure should develop near the Bahamas, and there is a high chance that it could become a pre-season tropical or subtropical system. The low will stay offshore and not affect our forecast, except for those few more clouds on Sunday. The beaches could have large swells and rip currents along with a passing shower on Sunday. A cold front will move through late Monday, with some scattered storms. Behind that front, it will cool into the 70s with clouds around on Tuesday with still a chance for rain. So today it's mostly sunny and warm with a high of 84. Tonight, fair and mild, the overnight low will be 61. Saturday, mostly sunny to partly cloudy. The high will be 87. Saturday night will be partly cloudy with an overnight low of 62. Sunday will be partly sunny with a high of 86. The 10-day forecast, including today, 84 today, 87 Saturday, 86 Sunday, 87 Monday, 76 Tuesday, 74 Wednesday, 76 Thursday, 83 Friday, 86 Saturday, and 88 on Sunday. The coronavirus report, it looks like the cases are growing at this hour, there are 17,129 positive cases in North Carolina, 641 deaths, 231,547 completed tests, and 492 hospitalizations in 99 counties. At this hour, there are 495 cases in Chatham County with 24 deaths, 237 cases in Harnett County with 17 deaths, 301 cases in Lee County with 3 deaths, and 113 plus and 10 plus deaths in Moore County. Lee County Government Health Department confirmed yesterday nine additional residents had tested positive for COVID-19. The Health Department continues to monitor 163 individuals and 133 individuals have resumed normal activities. The county reports three laboratory-confirmed COVID-19 deaths. You are reminded to still use the three Ws. Wear a cloth mask when going out. Wash your hands frequently, at least 20 seconds each time, and watch your distance. Data and trends show the COVID-19 curve in North Carolina is stable nearly one week into the phase one. That's according to state officials at a press conference yesterday. Our COVID-19 decisions are guided by the data and the science, according to Governor Roy Cooper. He said we will use the time in this phase to keep a careful eye on the data and the indicators before we are ready to announce the start of phase two. North Carolinians should continue to stay home if they can and take precautions to keep themselves safe. Continued stability in these trends is a real positive for our state. While we remain on a good path for the 14-day trends we need to see to move on phase two, our progress as a state is still dependent on our individual actions. No testing sites are listed in Harnett or Sampson counts, counties. There are two sites in Lee County. Based on the metrics laid out last month by Cooper and Mandy Cohen, officials need to continue watching the trends before announcing a shift into phase two. According to the CDC, people with COVID-19 
can have a wide range of symptoms, ranging from mild symptoms to severe illness. Symptoms may appear 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus. People with these symptoms may have COVID-19, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fever, chills, muscle pain, sore throat, new loss of taste or smell. This list is not all inclusive. Other less common symptoms have been reported, including nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. If you think you or someone you know has COVID-19 symptoms, call your doctor about your symptoms and getting tested. Get medical attention immediately if you develop emergency warning signs for COVID-19 like trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, or bluish lips or face. A lifelong entrepreneur who saw potential for growth in people and places, Kenneth Kenny Purcell, the owner of Purcell Funeral Home in Southern Pines, died Monday. Robert Nunnally, owner of Pines Funeral Home, said he was saddened by the loss of a man he called a great friend rather than a competitor. The two met while attending Gupton Jones College in Georgia over 30 years ago. Purcell, 55 of Vass, established his business in Southern Pines in May of 1995. He later expanded his enterprise to funeral home locations in Rayford and Larnburg. Oliver Hines said Purcell was a supportive and interested in bettering the local community, even if that occasionally put him at odds with others. Graveside services were held yesterday at Serenity Memorial Park Cemetery in Rayford. Purcell is survived by his wife of 30 years, Barbara, and their children. Fred Thomas Ware, 54, was arrested by Sanford Police yesterday in charge of larceny and possession of stolen goods, which is a felony, at 3014 South Horner Boulevard. Marquise Larice Wilson, 26, was arrested and charged with assault of a female at 3504 Hiawatha Trail. Michael Andrew Tesman, 28, was arrested and charged with possession of controlled substances, possession of marijuana, drug paraphernalia, exceeding the speed limit on the highway, operating a vehicle with no insurance, fictitious or altered tag and registration, failure to change address on the license, and other charges, and he was arrested at 110 Fields Drive. Chase Byron Lee, 35, was arrested and charged with failure to appear. In Moore County, Sheriff Ronnie Fields announces the drug arrest of five individuals following a search in the Robbins area of the county. On May 14th, deputies with the Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at a residence in the 1800 block of North Moore Road. The executed search warrant was conducted at the conclusion of a drug investigation. Arrested were Thomas Burke Edmonston, 39, of Robbins. He's being held on a $7,500 secured bond. Donald Ray Edmonston, 64, held on a $100,000 secured bond. Matthew Lee Warren, 32, $2,000 secured bond. Haley Ann Allred, 23, $1,500 secured bond. And Terry Lee Garner, 42, $5,000 secured bond. All of the charges involved possession of controlled substances, heroin, methamphetamine, and maintaining a dwelling. Moore County Sheriff Ronnie Fields announced the arrest of two individuals following a search in the Eagle Springs area. Sheriff's officers executed a search warrant at a residence on Possum Hollow Road. The executed search warrant was conducted at the conclusion of a drug investigation. Arrested were Casey Colon Tanner, 43, and Rodney Dale Cagle, 41. Tanner is being held on a $25,000 secured bond, and Kate is being held on a $25,000 secured bond. They face a court appearance on July 16th. A store in Robbins suffered extensive damage yesterday after a car crashed through its front window. A Mazda sedan crashed into the Quick Check convenience store 
on Highway 705. The vehicle took out most of the four-foot brick wall underneath and shattered the storefront window. The front half of the vehicle was inside the store with the rear wheels outside on the sidewalk. Heavy debris was thrown throughout the building. Officials are investigating. The Bandit flight team will fly over Sanford, Pinehurst, Rockingham, and Rayford tomorrow, May 16, to honor area health care and emergency services workers. The salute to these frontline heroes is sponsored by the Pinehurst, Southern Pines, and Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau and the organizers of the annual Festival de Avion. According to Phil Wirtz, CVB president and CEO, like the many tribute flights we have seen across the country and in North Carolina, we wanted to do something similar for health care and emergency services workers and everyone else on the front lines of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. If people go outside to see the flyover, we simply ask them to have fun, take pictures and videos, but do so while social distancing. The flyover will start in Sanford as the formation passes over the Central Carolina Hospital at 11.45 a.m. From there, the bandit flight team arrives over First Health Moore Regional Hospital in Pinehurst at approximately 12 p.m., then over the Pinehurst Town Hall and the police and fire departments before proceeding over the Carolina Hotel at Pinehurst Resort and Pinehurst Country Club. The formation will then turn south for flyovers over First Health MRH Richmond in Rockingham and approximately 12, 12 p.m. at First Health MRH Hoke in Rayford at 12.30 before the team heads back to Moore County for lunch at the Pig and Pig Restaurant in Carthage. Wirtz initially reached out to Peter Stilwell of Tar Heel Communication Solutions with the idea for the tribute flight. Stilwell and David Drawshack with Drawshack Communication own and operate the Festival d'Avion, an annual celebration of freedom and flight, and honors men and women who have served in the armed forces. He said, we gave the bandits a call, and they were immediately interested in helping out. The bandit flight team is a North Carolina-based group of formation pilots who fly vintage aircraft to preserve the military warbird heritage and as an opportunity to salute our returning war veterans. Typically, the team will fly a maximum of six planes in demonstration formations. However, the tribute flight on Saturday may include up to 10 vintage aircraft. The flyover will recognize our frontline health care workers and first responders. It looks like the weather will be beautiful and we expect them to arrive in Pinehurst right around noon. Looking ahead to fall, Stillwell is busily regrouping details for the 2020 Festival Davion. This year's air show was postponed in April due to COVID-19. It has been rescheduled for October 2nd and 3rd at the Moore County Airport. This year's event will include a celebration concert featuring the Ultimate Eagles Tribute Band, a runway 5K race walk, special aircraft exhibits, scheduled flyovers, warbird displays, precision jump team exhibitions, and other entertainment. Classic cars and trucks are also displayed during the event, plus area and regional food trucks, craft beer breweries, and North Carolina wineries and vendors will participate. The Boys and Girls Club of Central North Carolina, celebrating 25 years, has made an announcement. Very early on, the team explored the idea of the clubs in Chatham, Lee, and Harney counties for the first responders. Based upon the surveys they sent to the community, however, that service was not yet in demand in our service region. Through those surveys, we learned that many parents were at home with their kids and didn't have an emergent need for the clubs to open for food service or for regular programs. As we began to move forward through the multi-phase system that has been laid out by Governor Cooper's team, we are receiving much more inbound inquiry from the community about our availability for the summer as folk are going back to work, increasing their hours of work, or are preparing to go back to work. 
Last month, the leadership team and executive director crafted and presented three operation scenarios for the summer, full capacity, half capacity, and suspended operations. The corporate board of directors approved all three scenarios and asked that he lead the organization in the needed direction based upon the current environment and needs in the community. He said, we continue to spend a considerable amount of time consulting and communicating with our risk management partners at First Bank Insurance Services and the Redwoods Group, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, local departments of health and more, as we explore our options and provision ways to operate in a manner that will be lawful and safe to club members, the staff, and public health. Some key points about the operations. They will operate the clubs at approximately 50% enrollment, at least initially. Staff will report for training during the week of May 18th and the week of June 1st for training related to summer programs, COVID-19 protocols, childhood trauma, and more. The daily health screening will prepare to implement is comprehensive and CDC-influenced. We will read the temperatures of our staff and club members multiple times per day, prohibit unnecessary entry by visitors and parents, and much more. Without question, this is the most stringent operational protocol we've ever used. We've confirmed with our vendors that our supply of hospital-grade cleaners, paper products, hand sanitizer, gloves, masks, and more will be in plentiful supply for our clubs, and we will provide two meals per day as a USDA summer food service provider at all three clubs. The Atlantic Basin could see up to 22 named storms this upcoming hurricane season. That's according to researchers at North Carolina State University. The Atlantic Basin includes the entire Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. According to researchers, the long-term 1951 to 2019 average of named storms is 11, and the short-term 1995 to 2019 average is 14. Of this season's named storms, 8 to 11 may grow strong enough to become hurricanes. The historical average is 6, with the possibility of 3 to 5 storms becoming major hurricanes. Zai said the Gulf of Mexico could see an extremely active hurricane season with the likelihood of six to ten named storms forming in the region, with two to five of them becoming hurricanes and one to two becoming major hurricanes. And finally, the Sanford Area Growth Alliance, Chamber of Commerce, Downtown Sanford, Inc., and Visit Sanford NC organizations have collaborated to develop the Safe Sanford NC effort in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and have developed an open doors checklist. This checklist, adapted by the National Retail Federation and provided by the National Main Street Center, represents guidance from subject matter experts and is intended to highlight key topics to consider as businesses seek to reopen operations. Individual business circumstances will be unique and businesses are encouraged to work with their legal and financial advisors to adapt guidance in the checklist to their specific situation, keeping safety a priority for customers and employees. Employer practices should be designed to discourage contagious employees and customers from entering a business or facility and mitigate the effect of contagious individuals in the store. The checklist highlights various key health protections and safeguards to keep in mind as we all seek a return to normal or quasi-normal operations. Once businesses have reviewed the Safe Sanford NC checklist, they are encouraged to complete the safety sign and poster to display in their window or door showing the safety measures they have implemented. The checklist includes to-dos such as encouraging social distancing, considering face masks for employees and possibly customers, cleaning and sanitation measures, employee training on safety measures, return and exchange policies, fitting rooms, and product samples and testers. You've been listening to the Noon News, brought to you Monday through Friday at this time by Central Electric Membership Corporation, a Touchstone Energy Cooperative. For Sanford's number one news team, I'm Margaret Murchison.